Hari Om, I'm Raju Chidambaram, and my talk today is on Mathematical Foundations of the Hindu Sanatana Dharma. First, let me offer my salutations to Gurudev Swam Chinmayananda, who inspired me to study and practice Vedanta. Vedanta, as you will see, figures large in this talk. What exactly is Sanatana, or eternal, about our Hindu Dharma? I believe it is our Vedas, and more specifically, the philosophical essence of Vedas, namely Vedanta. Vedanta is the defining science of spirituality. It applies not just to Hindus, not even to just human beings on this earth, but it applies to any sentient being in any universe. Vedanta is both eternal and universal in this sense. The purpose of my talk today is to show that Vedanta is a genuine science that, like physics, can be mathematically presented. Mathematical study of Vedanta, I started that in year 1995, and early encouragement was received from WAVES organizers, especially and particularly in gratitude to Professor Balram Singh for encouraging me in this work. Many of the results of my work have been presented in previous WAVES conferences starting in 1998, and it has also resulted in four books. The most recent book, called The Elegant Geometry of Our Inner Path to Enlightenment, is the basis for this talk. Uh, you can, by the way, get a free PDF copy of this book by going to my website, which is the mathematicsofspirituality.com. Now going to the mathematics itself, there are five so-called input variables involved in defining the mathematics of spirituality. They include the sentiency of the jiva, the vasanas of the jiva, the willpower of the jiva over its mind to control its mind, and objects and situations encountered in the world by the jiva. The purity of mind of the jiva plays a central role, as you will see, in discussing spirituality. These are the general equations which in a way represent the Vedantic teachings. Now, don't panic. I'm not going to discuss the mathematics, but only show their spiritual implications. If first, a general observation that comes from this study is that, mathematically speaking, all life experiences of a jiva are functions of just one variable, omega. That is, life is an expression of the consciousness itself. So this agrees well with the fundamental notion in our Upanishads, which says, Sarvam Brahmamayam, or you may say, Brahman alone is experienced as this world. The general equations also enable us to compute the state of mind of a jiva on encountering an object and show the result in the so-called mindscape diagram. The vertical axis of this diagram shows how pleasant or unpleasant the object is to the jiva. And the horizontal axis of the diagram shows how pure the purity of mind of the jiva. The two together determine the state of mind of the jiva. This numerical example illustrates how is ordinary samsari, that is a worldly man with worldly attachments to his family and friends and so forth, how he experiences worldly objects. For example, to such a samsari, dhyana or meditation is experienced as a very pleasant one. But the other objects of the world can put him in a very happy mood or very unhappy mood or something in between. So altogether, we can say that this jiva is at the whims of the, or the mercy of the samsara. And that's why I suppose we call him samsari. We know this fact only too well. Now compare this with the mindscape diagram of a yogi. A yogi is one who is pure in mind at all times. And to this yogi, no matter what objects or situations he runs into in life, he is always quiet and content, as this chart shows. So the Gita says, Santushta Sadadam Yogi, 
This chart affirms, affirms visually that Gita saying, a yogi always remains content and, and at peace. The world does not disturb a yogi, nor does he disturb the world, says Gita. And a couple of interesting observations at this point. The mathematical model suggests that while the pressure given by the worldly objects is bounded, limited, that is, they cannot give unlimited pressure, the pain they may potentially cause has no limit. This is perhaps an observation not found as such in Vedantic texts, but Vedantic texts often make this clear, clearly implied. A second point is that the only sure way to avoid suffering in this world is by making mind pure. That is why in Vedanta, as well as in all religions, they emphasize the need for purity of mind. So let us see how the purity of mind evolves over time as a result of practicing spiritual sadhanas. The Chinmaya model shown here is based on a fact of spirituality often taught by Swami Chinmayananda and it is a straightforward way to model spiritual evolution mathematically. Again, I do not intend to emphasize on the math, but I will show just one, one of the many amazing results that this equation produces. Namely, it shows this math leads to a picture which in one single diagram shows a jiva's entire journey from its birth in samsara to its final release from the same samsara. So let's look at that picture. You will not see this picture in any Vedantic text, yet it is an eloquent picture that showcases Vedantic teachings. The inner spiritual path from the jiva's first birth at point A to realizing the self, the Om or the Atman at the center turns out to be a right-handed inbound Archimedean spiral. Please look at this picture carefully because it is both a beautiful and meaning, meaningful picture, especially if you are a Hindu. Especially if you are a Hindu. Why? We Hindus are accustomed to doing pradakshinas or circumambulations around a temple. We walk clockwise around the altar of the deity inside the temple. Mathematics is suggesting that in its spiritual path to realize the self, the jiva does protection us, moving clockwise around the Atman, which the Upanishads say is in the temple of our heart. To me, it is remarkable that mathematics should lead us to a picture of a jiva's journey, life journey, that is so much like the circumambulations we do around the temple. But this is a production of a production or circumambulation with one important difference. While walking around clockwise around in circle, we also keep stepping closer with every step towards the center. In other words, in this inbound spiraling path, there are two motions, a circular motion around the center and an inward motion towards the center. The circular motion represents a jiva's worldly life or transactional, vyavaharic life. And this consists of many birth death cycles. So this is the samsara chakra. The inward motion is our spiritual or adhyatmic life that takes us inwards to Atman in the center. Now something worth noting in this picture. A jiva, you will note, cannot reach the self in the center without going around the circle of worldly life. That is, however dedicated a jiva may be to its spiritual goal to realize, release moksha from the samsara, it does not have the option to drop out of its worldly life. And why? Because our worldly life is God will, and there is no other way but to live that. But Vedanta says we can and we should live our worldly life in detachment as a pure witness to the world and thus avoid all the sufferings which otherwise will happen to the jiva in the worldly life. This is, of course, a primary message of Vedanta. And that is so beautifully illustrated in this uh, 
spiraling circle. So, in conclusion, in the short time available, I have attempted to show that the Vedantic principles on which the Hindu Sanatana Dharma are founded are eternal and universal. That the Vedanta is a logically rigorous science that can be mathematically stated, understood, and communicated. Altogether, mathematical spirituality, while it only reaffirms Vedantic teachings, has given us some elegant new visual ways to discuss and communicate these Vedantic teachings. Few religions will dare claim that they are a mathematical science or they are founded on a mathematical science. I think you have seen here in this talk today that the Hindu Sanatana Dharma can confidently make that claim. This is something more Hindus should know and they could be just leaving now. Thank you for listening and Hari Thank you. That's the end of my talk.